Plants communicate with each other. Scientists have determined how these conversations take place. When a plant suffers any mechanical damage or is attacked by hordes of insects, it emits volatile organic compounds. Neighboring plants can sense them and prepare to defend themselves against upcoming threats. In new research, Japanese scientists have determined how these conversations take place. They also managed to record such a conversation on a recording. The phenomenon of air communication between plants via volatile organic compounds VOCs, was first documented in 1983 and has since been observed in dozens of different plant species. However, the molecular mechanisms underlying the perception of these compounds are poorly understood. Scientists led by Professor Masatsugu Toyota of Saitama University in Japan took a closer look at the chemicals involved in this communication and what happens in plants at the molecular level. Scientists recorded conversations between plants via VOCs and revealed how VOCs are absorbed by plants, initiating defense responses. The description and results of the research were published in the journal Nature Communications. Even though we can't see it, plants are surrounded by a mist of volatile airborne compounds that they use for communication and protection. These compounds, like odors, deter herbivores and warn neighboring plants about threats. This phenomenon has been known since the 1980s. Researchers knew how plants send messages, but had no idea how they received them. Now a team of Japanese researchers have used cutting-edge real-time imaging techniques to find out how plants receive and respond to aerial alerts. Scientists built a pump to transfer compounds emitted by injured and insect-infested plants to undamaged neighbors. They also used a fluorescence microscope to observe how other plants responded to the warning signals. We built equipment to pump VOCs emitted by caterpillar-infested plants onto undamaged neighboring plants and connected it to a real-time fluorescence imaging system, Toyota says. Prepared in this way, scientists began experiments on plants. They placed moth, Spodoptera litura, caterpillars on the leaves of tomatoes and Arabidopsis thaliana. Then they observed the reactions of another Arabidopsis growing nearby, but free from insects and undamaged. What was important in the observations was the fact that the plants selected for research had been previously genetically modified. They were enriched with fluorescence, causing them to glow green when they detected an influx of calcium ions. Calcium signaling is also used by human cells to communicate. The team showed that it is changes in the concentration of calcium ions that trigger defense mechanisms. The researchers observed that both VOCs released from leaves eaten by the caterpillars and those emitted from leaves damaged by the researchers induced changes in CA2 plus concentrations in nearby undamaged plants. Scientists also took a closer look at the types of VOCs released by plants. They found that two of them, Z3HAL and E2HAL, cause changes in calcium signaling. Plants do not have a nose, but their stomata serve as a gateway for these compounds to quickly enter the gaps in the leaf tissues, explains Toyota. Treatment of plants with a stomatal closing compound significantly reduced calcium signaling. The team found that these two specific compounds increased the expression of defense-related genes in the alarmed plants. We have finally uncovered the intricate history of when and how plants respond to warning messages in the air from threatened neighbors. Hidden from our view, this ethereal communication network plays a key role in neighborhood protection of plants against direct threats, Toyota points out.
decaying organoids. Scientists have grown a model of human conjunctiva in the laboratories of the Hubrecht Institute in Utrecht. Scientists have grown human conjunctival organoids that can produce tears. Using this model, scientists discovered a cell type that was previously not known to exist in the conjunctiva. These organoids will be used to test drugs for various diseases affecting the conjunctiva. Organoids are tiny versions of various organs grown in the laboratory from stem cells that retain key anatomical features of full-size organs. Such three-dimensional models are an invaluable aid in research where the use of living brains or kidneys is impossible or unethical. Scientists obtain a living organ to test different concepts. This includes testing reactions to medications or observing development in unfavorable conditions. Research on organoids gives scientists the opportunity to thoroughly study the organs and understand the causes of many diseases. Organoids created at the Hubrecht Institute imitate the function of natural human conjunctiva. While examining the model, scientists also found fascicle cells. Until now, it was not realized that they occur in the conjunctiva. The description and results of the work of Dutch scientists were published in Cell Stem Cell to protect against injuries or infections. Our eyes produce tears. The conjunctiva, the thin, transparent mucous membrane that covers the eye and the inside of the eyelids, is partly responsible for their production by releasing mucus. This, in turn, allows tears to stick to the surface of the eye and protects it against pathogens. The conjunctiva is affected by various diseases and disorders, such as conjunctivitis or dry eye syndrome. But its functioning may also be affected by cancer, allergies or infections. In severe cases, conjunctival dysfunction can lead to blindness. Research on the conjunctiva has been somewhat limited until now because there was no good model. This condition is changed by organoids grown in the Netherlands. The researchers used stem cells from conjunctival tissue provided by organ donors and patients undergoing eye surgery. By treating the cells with growth factors, they induced them to form three-dimensional structures imitating human conjunctiva. This is how mini conjunctivas were created. These organoids contain all the cells normally found in the conjunctiva, including mucus-producing cells, or goblet cells, and keratinocytes, which enable the tissue to produce mucus-rich tears. The purpose of the mucus is to protect and lubricate the surface of the eye. Once we had functioning organoids, we wanted to find out how the conjunctiva is involved in tear production, explains Marie Bania Helloué. We found that the conjunctiva produces antimicrobial components and contributes to tear production in many ways, not just by producing mucus, he adds. The researcher has considerable achievements in work on organoids. She was part of a team that in 2021 grew tear glands in the lab from human stem cells and got them to produce tears. During the research, scientists identified tuft cells or brush cells. These are epithelial cells found in the intestines and covering other parts of the body. But until now researchers did not know that they also occur in the conjunctiva. Similar cells have been found in other tissues, but not in the human conjunctiva, says Bania Helloué. Importantly, these cells have previously been linked to allergies. In experiments with organoids, scientists exposed them to interleukins to mimic what happens during an allergic reaction. The organoids started producing completely different tears. There was more mucus, but also more antibacterial ingredients, notes Bania Helloué. The observations showed that tuft cells also became more abundant in the organoid under allergy-mimicking conditions, suggesting that they play a role in the eye's response to allergy. In the study, 
Researchers infected organoids with various viruses known to cause viral conjunctivitis and then tried to treat them. For example, infection with herpes simplex virus type 1, which is primarily responsible for oral and genital herpes, can also cause conjunctivitis. Researchers managed to cure the inflammation. We can use our model, for example, to test drugs for allergies or dry eye disease, says Bania Helue. In the long run, it will even be possible to create a replacement conjunctiva for people with eye burns, cancer, and maybe even genetic diseases. The Peregrine Lander mission has ended. The lunar mission of the American company Astrobotic had major problems from the beginning. Just a few hours after the launch, it was known that nothing would come of a safe landing on the moon. After 10 days in space, the Peregrine Lander burned up on January 18 in the Earth's atmosphere. Astrobotic's mission with the Peregrine Lander, which was to land on the lunar surface, was launched on January 8. This was the debut flight of the new Vulcan Centaur rocket, developed by United Launch Alliance. The rocket operated flawlessly, but shortly after launch, flight controllers began reporting anomalies in the lander. The first sign of a problem was that the ship was unable to change its orientation in space to point its solar panels towards the sun. In later updates, Astrobotic stated that there were communication problems and engineers suspected a fuel leak from the lander. Unfortunately, it appears that a failure in the drivetrain is causing a critical loss of fuel. The team is working to stabilize this loss, but given the situation, we have made it a priority to maximize the knowledge available and the data we can collect. We are currently assessing what alternative mission profiles may be feasible, the company said after discovering the flaw. The initial diagnosis of the company's experts was that the fuel leak could have been caused by a blocked valve, which in turn caused a rupture of the oxidizer tank. Additionally, the leak generated a small thrust force that changed the orientation of the spacecraft. There were 21 pieces of cargo on board the Peregrine. These included NASA scientific instruments, including the neutron spectrometer system, which was supposed to search for traces of water ice near the moon's surface by examining the composition of the soil, and the linear energy transfer spectrometer, a device designed to collect information about radioactivity on the surface of the silver globe. The loads also included human ashes. A fuel leak ended Peregrine's chances of landing successfully on the moon. If successful, it would be a historic feat. As no private spacecraft has ever successfully landed on the surface of the silver globe. After the company confirmed that there was no chance of a safe landing, NASA scientists decided that they could still get something out of their scientific instruments and started collecting data from space. Astrobotic, in consultation with NASA, evaluated several options for safely completing the mission. Experts determined that the best course of action would be for Peregrine to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, causing it to burn up. That's why they set course for Earth. To ensure a controlled and safe disposal of the spacecraft, Astrobotic, in cooperation with NASA and other agencies, selected a projected re-entry location over the South Pacific Ocean. The idea was that any debris that did not burn up in the atmosphere would fall into the ocean. It entered the atmosphere on January 18, 2024, at approximately 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, just south of the Fiji Islands. Astrobiotic confirmed that atmospheric re-entry was complete. More details are expected to be released at Friday's press conference, but in one of the company's latest announcements, 
We can read that, the vehicle completed its controlled re-entry in South Pacific waters at 4.04 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we are awaiting independent confirmation from government authorities, the company wrote in social media. Peregrine operated in space for over 10 days. Although the mission was an overall failure, it did manage to collect data from several scientific instruments. Although the results will take some time to interpret, preliminary data suggest that the instruments have collected measurements of the radiation and chemical environment near the lander in space. This is one of the few positives of this mission. It also shows that the instruments survived the difficult conditions of space and function as expected.